Welcome back to the workshop, folks. Today I'm gonna to show you how to turn this into this using only two tools. So what are the two tools that you'll need? You'll need a saw, or a saw, or preferably a saw, and a nail gun, or just a hammer and nails, or if you prefer, a drill and screws. Here's the key to this project. While the quality of the one by material at your local big box store may be lacking, it is usually milled quite precisely. We're gonna take advantage of that by using one by 12 material as spacers between the shelves of our bookshelf unit. This unit is comprised of a vertical board on either side, as well as a horizontal board forming the shelf itself, Additionally, there are vertical spacers made out of 1x12s which set the height of the shelf but also form joinery when stacked with the shelves. And finally, another 2x12 runs the length of the shelf at the back for additional support. Now I know what you're thinking. This shelf is way too small for a normal bookshelf. Actually, this needs to fit into a closet, so that's why I made it this size. Also, it fits on the camera a heck of a lot better than an eight foot wide built-in bookshelf, which is an upcoming project of mine. But ideally, these horizontal shelves are going to be made out of four foot, six foot, or eight foot lumber, and you don't have to cut them to length either. Now that you understand the concept behind this bookshelf, let's get down to the details. The supplies you'll need are a stack of 1x12s. You may also want some premium 1x2s for trim material. Depending on shelf height, you may need some 1x4s or other uh, spacers as well. You'll find out about that later. To determine how many boards you'll need, it helps to plan the project out in CAD. No, not that CAD. I'm talking about cardboard-aided design. You'll need nails or screws. Optionally, you may want to employ some wood glue and the finish of your choice. You may also want a pencil, but that's so ubiquitous. Does it really count as a tool? Meh. If you need an extra set of hands, some clamps will help, but they are not necessary. Measuring for your cuts will actually be simpler and more precise without a tape measure. These vertical sides can be cut to whatever length you want or simply use a six foot long board. Likewise, the horizontal boards can be full length lumber. The vertical spacers, on the other hand, do need to be cut to the proper length. Here's how to do that. To determine the width of your one by 12 spacer, We'll simply take one of our side boards and knock the camera over with it <clears throat> and line that up perpendicular to our 1x12. Marking that gives us a spacer exactly as deep as our shelves. However, we need to leave room for our back. To accommodate for the back support, we simply subtract the width of our one by material, which is three quarters of an inch, but again, we don't need to worry about tape measures or math. Just line it up perfectly with the other line. Describe your new line and cross this out so you don't mistakenly cut on that line. Now that we have that measurement, we can set up our saw with a stop to repeatedly cut this width over and over again until we have enough spacers. Once you're at your saw, carefully line the blade up with your line, or alternatively, simply use a board for spacing, and then set up a stop block. This will allow for consistent repeated cuts. However, you probably do want to check against your actual project when you make that first cut.
Once you have all your spacers cut, it's time for assembly. Begin by putting a shelf across the bottom and the top. Only tack the bottom one in for now. Those will help hold the, top, the side square. On this specific unit, I've opted for a toe kick. More on that later. Next, take one of your spacers and I recommend gluing it into place in addition to nails. This glue will add a lot of structural strength. Make sure to bring this vertical spacer flush with the front as there is a three quarter inch gap in the back for the back panel. A piece of scrap is a great spacer here. Don't be like me here. Nailing from the inside out works out better because of the inertia of the heavier piece on the back. Continue stacking spacers and shelves working from the bottom up. The spacers require glue and nails. The shelves only are going to require a couple nails each side. Once you've installed your spacers and shelves, you can install the back panels. You'll notice this is a nice tight fit because everything is cut precisely. These back panels, again, only need to be tacked into place with a few nails. Now you have a functional shelf. However, there are a few ways we can tweak this to make it look nicer and add functionality. If a 1x12 does not give you enough shelf height, you can simply stack spacers to gain additional height. Here I've added a 1x4 so I can fit 1 gallon jugs on this bottom shelf. For this freestanding shelf, I've used 2x12s for the back to give it a solid back. However, if you want to do a built-in style of shelf, you can simply use a 1x2 or 1x4 furring strip in the back and then affix that to your wall. By adding a pair of 1x4s under the bottom shelf, you've created a toe kick to keep dust and whatnot off the bottom shelf. Another optional step is if you want to hide this mismatched end grain and long grain, installing a piece of 1x2 trim really helps step this shelf up to the next level, appearance-wise. Here I've chosen some premium pine, but you could do oak or whatever else and even stain it its own color if you like. Only for long spans, I'd recommend gluing a 1x2 to the front of each shelf. This will give you a hair more depth and also add more vertical rigidity to prevent from sagging. For long spans with a 6 to 8 foot board, I also recommend putting the same 1x12 spacers in the middle for additional support. These can then be trimmed out with 1x2 and finally, you can complete your project with the finish of your choice. Here I'm simply using boiled linseed oil. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope this was helpful to some of you out there. It's a great beginner project or for anybody who wants to quickly and easily build a bookshelf. By the way, let me know in the comments down below if anybody wants like a printable infographic of how to do this.